Today we are going to be checking out the Flyblocks DIY Build and Fly Drone 4-in-1 Kit. And this was sent to me courtesy of Flyblocks. So let's get it into the air and check it out. The Flyblocks DIY Build and Fly Drone Kit is for lack of a better term basically a lego drone so it's going to be a bunch of blocks that stack together and you can make four different types of drones there are two different designs that are quadcopters and two designs that are hexacopters and personally i don't really enjoy hexacopters all that much so i only built the two quadcopters i did an unboxing of the fly blocks here but i had some issues with the audio so i'm not going to play it in its entirety but i'll kind of talk over the video here comes in a nice box with some nice packaging and nice graphics on it and then inside there are two separate boxes and inside one of those boxes is the transmitter the other box contains all the components for building your fly blocks and it's going to come with various parts and six motors and a bunch of spare props and one thing I will note while I'm talking about props is I've had a few issues where the props, you know, I'll fly a flight and then I'll either crash it or land it hard and then go to repair it and then fly it again. And, and a lot of the props kind of fly off after a crash. So I'm not sure if that's just some sort of weird thing I got going on with mine or if it's something that's going to be a problem for all of these. But anyway, the build process of the fly blocks is very simple. Directions are included and they are very easy to follow. It's really not that hard to build, but the first time you do it will obviously be the most difficult. And then once you get a little bit of experience with it, you'll be building it faster and faster. And it was my experience that I was rebuilding something basically every time I flew it. So hopefully you guys enjoy building if you're gonna be looking into this kit. And it is pretty fun. This is focused towards the tinkerer, the builder, Lego enthusiast, if you will. And it's a really nice package. Once you get it all built together, it flies very nice. And it actually flies very well for being a snap together quadcopter. So I don't wanna to talk too much, but it does come with a 900 milliamp hour battery and an included USB charger with a JST connector. And it's gonna take you just under two hours to charge this battery. And that is quite a lengthy charging time, but you also get it just under nine minutes of flight, in my experience. You know, that's gonna vary a little bit here and there, but you get a nice long flight time out of this battery. And if you do happen to have a hobby grade charger, you could probably cut down on that charging time. So if you got a builder out there, or if you are a builder yourself, this is definitely a good kit to check out. If you got somebody you wanna get interested in drones or in STEM or something like that, engineering or just flight in general, the Flyblocks kit is a very nice option for you. So why don't we get into the review, and I'll also note that I had a little issue with the audio on the flight review where my actual microphone I was wearing it didn't record, but I do have the audio off of my Yi camera, and it sounds okay, so I'm gonna roll with it because I got a good flight out of it. Apologize that it's not uh, the normal quality microphone that I have, but I don't think it's too bad. And hopefully in the future I won't have any issues for you guys. So let's get into the flight review. This is gonna be the flight review of the Fly Blocks DIY drone kit. And a nice little package, very STEM focused. So you're gonna, the idea behind this is you're gonna build your own quad and then you can fly it, crash it, rebuild it, and the cycle never ends apparently. So anyway, I decided to go with this kind of semi X frame. Not 100% sure I followed this to the T with the directions but it does fly, it flies pretty good. This has been my favorite configuration, I guess is the word I'm looking for, configuration for this quad. It has another quad form and it also has a hexa two hexacopter forms. And you could probably, you know, if you're inventive, you could probably do something yourself with this. But this has been my favorite and I'm not a huge fan of hexacopters, so I didn't even bother building those. So if you're gonna fly a quad, you have two motors left over for spares, or you can build the hex, whatever. So the front of this is gonna have the antenna sticking out, and this is your flight board here on top. It has a JST connector, 
with a 900 milliamp hour battery, one cell, and it is fairly thin, so I attempted to fit the Sky Viper batteries in here. They do not fit, and I'll roll some footage on putting this together. Fairly simple process. You follow the directions. Motors are plug and play, and it really doesn't take too long to build. It is, it flies decent, you know, I wouldn't expect this to fly as well as it does actually, but it actually flies pretty good. And um, one, one con on it though is it is fairly fragile, so even if you don't have like a major crash, you might end up having to rebuild this, but it doesn't take long, and that's kind of the whole idea behind it. So it is really cool. Go over the transmitter real quick. Very standard transmitter. You got your high and your low speeds. These are non-functioning buttons here. The center button is gonna be headless mode. These are trim buttons, and that's basically it. You do have bumper buttons up here. I don't think they do anything though. This one does not flip or anything like that, which I wouldn't really expect it to. So why don't we get in the air, check it out. I'm gonna turn the tr transmitter on, connect the battery, and then I'll give it to calibration so we're bound here and the other thing is uh, down and in like this is going to reset your gyros calibrate your gyros so we got a little bit of a wind here we're up at the lake I'm gonna go right to the high rate and let's go up in the air flies pretty good I gotta be honest with you for the Lego quad you know obviously you're gonna get some vibrations not the most sturdy quad in the world but you know, it doesn't fly half bad. Very controllable. Extremely not durable though, but it's not intended to be durable. You know, this one is gonna be build, crash, repeat. That is their, their slogan, I think, too. But flies fairly stable. Not getting much of a wind right now. Let's show you here. So maybe raising up an elevation there a little bit. Didn't get a, a total hover there. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, I don't know if you can see it here, but this rubber band that is underneath here, that is integral to the stability of the battery bay, because I tried flying this a few times before I actually put that on there, and the battery bay will just kind of fall off in mid-flight. In the beginning, I was like, what am I doing wrong here? The battery bay just keeps falling off. This can't be right. And then I finally, saw in the directions that you're supposed to attach this rubber band. So I might give you a crash on the end here or maybe when I just landed it might fall apart because that's happened to me before. Oop, we got a little, uh, I don't know if that was wind or what, but a little bit of a thing there. But see, it doesn't fly half bad for the Lego quad. Fly box, I guess. I guess I shouldn't say Lego. And this one was sent to me courtesy of Flyblocks, so thank you to Flyblocks. I've been having some fun with this one. I'd say the one downside is the durability, where you could, you know, kind of... One time I built this thing, and then I accidentally hit the headless mode button, and so then when I took off, it went the opposite direction I was expecting it to, and I crashed, and I had to build the whole thing over again. So that's one little kind of con on this. Let's see if we can get a hover. Wind is pushing us back here. I got a little bit of a wind coming from my back. But trying to get a nice hover. I don't think it's gonna happen with this wind. It's just a slight breeze, but it's enough to push it back. So this one has decent power for such a unusual little quad. And somebody's mowing their lawn here, so I apologize for that, but hey, what are you gonna do? Or maybe not more than that. It might be a generator or something. I'm not sure what that is. But I do apologize for the noise. But hey, we're out here flying a quad. That's making some noise. So it does do a little weird things in the wind a little bit. And I don't know if I've, I think I mentioned earlier, I don't know if I've gotten a full flight time without actually crashing it and having to rebuild it. So I'm gonna try to keep this one in the air and see what kind of total flight time we get out of this 900 milliamp hour battery. It is a pretty impressive battery size. It is thin though, as I said earlier, so you're gonna be somewhat limited on what you can fit in there. 
but it does have the JSC plug. So there we go, we got some good stability here, maybe drifting a little bit that way. I don't know. I think you probably have a hard time maybe trimming this out just because it's not the sturdiest thing in the world, you know, it's a snap together quad. But it is pretty cool, I gotta admit. I do like it. And the building is part of the fun of this. And it actually, I'm actually really surprised at how well this flies. I mean, it's not the most maneuverable and it doesn't fly necessarily like the best quad I've ever flown, but for what it is, I think it flies actually pretty excellent. And it's a lot of fun, especially once I figured out that rubber band thing on the bottom there, because then the battery will stay attached and it doesn't fall apart in midair. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, when I first built that thing, I was like, what is going on? I was kind of confused of what the bat what the rubber bands were for, too. I was like, why are there rubber bands in here? I guess not the most unusual thing you'd find in a quad kit, though. So this is the high rate. There are two rates, the lower rate. And you can fly this indoors. The one thing about flying this outdoors, if you do have some sort of crash, you might easily lose some pieces, but you could also lose them inside also. So, yeah, there's that. But yeah, it doesn't really funnel, not quite quick enough to funnel, maybe a little bit. But I mean, this isn't gonna be your acrobatic quad. It, does, it doesn't fly half bad though, I gotta be honest with you. For just snap together pieces, it's pretty cool. Getting some wind pushing us around here. Let's see if we can bring it in for a close up. Kind of a, lot, a little on the loud side, but not too much. Rattles around a little bit. But as I said, you know, the pieces aren't in there 100% super sturdy, so not super surprising really. I do kind of wish you had more space in that battery bay to fit a more standard sized battery, but this is, you're getting a nice long flight time here. I don't know, well I'll have it on the screen when, when we get to the end here, but you know, we got a little bit of a breeze and it's taking, it's flying well, it's not really bothered by it too, too much. So this is an impressive little kit, you know, if you guys like building stuff, if you're into STEM, or into engineering, if you got kids that like that sort of thing, this is definitely a good kit for it. I mean, look at, this thing flies, I don't know how long we've been flying here, but we've been up in the air a while. And it flies decently stable. I think we're getting towards the end of our battery here. Let's see if we can bring it down a little bit. That is one other slight con on it that it's hard to tell when you're getting an LVC warning because the LEDs are on the top of that flight board. That's the only visible LED I can see. I'm not sure. And of course the wind is picked up, so I'm not. Let's see if we can, I can't tell. It's this one little, I'll show you when, when we finally land this. I'll show you where the LED is but not very visible from when you're in flight, unless it's below you. Let's see if we can bring it in close again. Wind is pushing, going into the wind here. So yeah, I mean, it can fight this breeze. I, I've flown other quads that have a very old difficult time fighting any sort of breeze. This one doesn't really have any problems. I like that it has the higher and the low rate. So if you're indoors, you probably use the low rate. That's probably gonna be adequate for you. Or if you wanna fly a little more daring and a little more sporty, use the high rate. But when you're flying outside, that high rate, it's enough to fight your standard breeze. I mean, obviously you're not gonna be flying this in super windy conditions or anything like that. But, my cousins would have loved this thing when we were kids. They had like every single Lego set you could possibly imagine. And they would always, they'd have like entire cities of Legos built. 
and I'd go over and I'd play with them. I think it was the coolest thing, and then I'd probably, you know, 10 minutes I'd lose interest. Where's my G.I. Joes? You know, where's my Transformers? This Lego stuff, trying to make me learn. But as far as this fly blocks kit, it is a nice way to get a young person into drones, or if you have like a school program or something. Uh-oh, what are we doing here? Oh, there we go. Oh, see? So that was, uh, I could feel that it was losing power. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but there's an LED flashing right here. So it's almost impossible to see unless you're, you know, it's down here like this or something like that. So that's one con on it. And obviously <laughs> we landed and we're, we're in pieces here. So that's, you know, for those of you that don't enjoy the building aspect of it, you're probably not going to want to buy this quad, this kit, to be honest with you. But that is the whole point of it, though, is to build crash and repeat. I'm going to actually unplug my battery here. Let me turn this way so we're not getting my shadow in there. And so there you go. This is actually I've landed it better than this with that LVC warning where I didn't totally kind of. This side seems okay, but obviously this side seen better days and. Make sure if you do crash outside, you don't lose your pieces. So this is that bat, this is the rubber band I was mentioning earlier. You're gonna want to make sure you attach that, or else your battery bay is not gonna want to stay on in flight. So there you go, guys. Fly blocks, DIY build crash repeat drone kit. I'm a fan of this. I think you know it's a very educational quadcopter gets you into building quads this could lead into you know building the FPV racers or building your own aerial video platform or something like that so definitely check it out if you're into stem or if you want to get somebody into building quads a young person or if you just enjoy you know a little puzzle or something like that definitely check this kit out it's really cool it flies really well but be prepared to build crash and then build again so hope you guys enjoyed this video i'll leave you with some flight footage of the fly blocks here and we'll catch you in the next one